But there's one more thing you need to know about the IB diploma. School district are speaking out against the International Baccalaureate Program. Here's my story. I'm about to start the IB in one of the first days of my junior year when we're all told to gather up in a room. The teachers tell us that we have some type of mystery test to complete. It turns out that this test that we're about to take can accurately predict the grade you're going to get in two years time. We were sent into the exam room and after question after question, I thought that I would most certainly get the highest mark. A few weeks later and I got an email in my inbox describing the results. Opened it and my heart sank. My ego was utterly destroyed, predicting me fives and sixes. This angered me to my core so much that on that day, I made a bet with myself that I would get a perfect 45. How's it going, future me? Welcome to 2019. So tell me, what was the final result? Is that really what I got? I hope you put in a lot of work. I hope you definitely proved this piece of wrong. Thus, in doing so, I tried everything. The YouTube videos, the Reddit posts, but with all the other commitments I had going on in my life, I got absolutely destroyed. It didn't help that I was infuriated when I got a four on my math exam, or a four in my English exam, or barely scraped a five in my chemistry. I know how that feels. That's when I slowly started to realize that everything I've heard about the IB was wrong. The advice was wrong. The memes were wrong. I had to swallow some difficult truths and instead apply a new set of tactics. These were strategies that I wasn't taught in school or anywhere else that allowed me to achieve a perfect 45 in the IB while having an entire hour for entertainment every week, eight hours of sleep, a social life, fitness, and achieving other life goals. So what are they not telling you? And what's the truth to really getting a 45 in the IB diploma? And most importantly, how can you make sure you achieve it with as little effort and as little time as possible so you can enjoy other ventures in high school? I'll be revealing three action points for elite ultra high performance to get a 45 in the IB diploma that you won't see on any other video. Plus, you need to watch this entire video through because I'm going to be dropping four to seven Easter eggs somewhere throughout this video. These are essentially secret codes that are scattered throughout this video that you can insert into the link in the description down below. When you do, you get access to multiple cheat sheets and special strategies that add on to what I talk about in this video. All right, let's do it. First of all, since you're gonna be spending your time watching this YouTube video, I want this to be the most valuable YouTube video you've ever seen. This is not your average BS tip video that you watch and then you forget about a few minutes later. This is the most important IB study video or whatever you wanna call it that you've seen on the entire internet. I'm not doing this to make you feel good or motivation or any of that BS. I'm doing this so you can get quantifiable actual results. And I'm putting in all this effort and all this quality and all this editing and all these hours because I truly care about my viewer, care about your success. And because of that, I want you to succeed. So get out your notepad because you're probably going to need to watch this more than once in order to fully grasp all of the secrets that I'm going to lay out. Are you ready to know the truth? We seem to be constantly pushed to set of beliefs that if you're not constantly grinding, working, or studying, there must be something wrong with you. In fact, getting a 45 in the IB is much easier than you might think. Let me explain. I found that there are two ways that you can be of the 0.31% of students who get a perfect 45 in the IB. First part is that you sacrifice your soul and work 24 seven in order to get that high score. In fact, the majority of the 45 IB people I know have embraced this strategy to a certain extent. The main problem here is that most people think that this is the only way. The second way consists of doing basically anything that you want in your free time while also getting a 45. And I managed to do that. I managed to get a 45 in May 2021 with the exam route by also having so much free time for so many other things. Not to mention I got into a very competitive university. This comes down to the understanding that the IB is a marathon, not a sprint. You cannot hope to just grind the night before the exam or the IA and get a high mark. That might work, but it's just not practical for success. However, if you're in that situation right now for whatever reason, this Easter egg will save you. All right, so type in the Easter egg code right here into the description link down below, and there's gonna be a very helpful infographic and information there that you can use to get yourself out of this last minute situation if you're in it right now. So before I reveal secret number one, you need to understand that there's something I developed that had the largest impact on my success in a 45, and that's discipline. Let's look at this word a little bit closely. Discipline. It's the ability to continue doing work consistently even when you might not feel like it. 
I developed this largely by chance when I was six to seven years old when I would drive up the mountain to go skiing with my family. During that drive, we would always use that time to listen to audiobooks. Weekend after weekend, year after year. Even when I didn't feel like it, we still listened to audiobooks. That right there is called discipline. What's crazy is that discipline is fundamentally simple to do. It's simple to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, nonstop. Despite the simplicity, most people don't even do it. And that's because, despite it being simple to do, it's not necessarily easy. One of my favorite quotes by Jim Rohn states that what's easy to do is also easy not to do. The reason why I like this quote is because there's profound wisdom. Wisdom that I still do not fully understand because I still lack decades of life experience. But every day I keep unpacking this quote and get closer to understanding it. And if we understand this a little bit deeper, we understand that the truth to any success is that there's a set of disciplines that can be repeated for a prolonged period of time to almost guarantee success. And because they're so fundamental and easy and simple to do, they oftentimes get disregarded in search of a more complicated system effectively making them easy not to do. Did you catch what I just said right there? So for secret number one, you need to become the type of person that can achieve a 45 IB score. Let me explain what I mean by that. John Maxwell stated that success is found in your daily routine. Therefore, it is the person you become in the pursuit of achieving your goals that ultimately allows you to achieve your goals. Once you realize that success is a character trait, you now need to become the type of person who's disciplined in getting good grades. This is when you'll have the 45 mindset to say, and everything after this just falls into place. And it's this mindset slash character slash attitude that allows you to then achieve that top score. Just because they think that giving you one small piece of tip or one small piece of advice is going to radically change all your results. And I'm gonna say it again, unless you have the character nailed in, your success and your results will not follow. And the reason why is because if you just have a few study tips, you're eventually gonna fail just because you're eventually gonna reach a point where your character breaks down. So ask yourself, what would a 45 IB person do? How would they think? How would they act? How would they make decisions? I'm gonna give you a lot of these answers a little bit later, but what I want you to do is I want you to sit down and write all of this out. And then every single action you take needs to align with that character, needs to align with that personnel. Then you gotta continue staying disciplined with these action points and over time you're going to become the type of person who can achieve a 45 in the IB. But that's not all because there are certain things that they are doing that you might never come up with in your list. Let's explore and see what those are. Now pay close attention here because in order to answer that question understand that your 45 success comes down fundamentally to your habits. Let's take a step back. You must understand that your habits determine the way you think, what you do, and what results you make in your life. To achieve 45 results, and really any goal, you need to have the habits that turn you into the type of person that allows you to then achieve that 45 results. If you have procrastination habits, distraction habits, and other unhealthy habits, it'll be almost impossible for you to achieve a 45 in the IB with as little effort as possible. Why? Because the IB 45 student who achieves these results as fast as possible has as much free time outside of school. It's never one thing that makes you successful. Rather, it's a combination of multiple small factors that add up to reach success. Now, I'm gonna reveal the most important habit that you can develop that directly contributes to 45 success. But before I do that, I'm gonna list out a few vital habits that allowed me to achieve success. Get ready to take notes and apply these right now. Number one is sleep for eight hours. I went to bed from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. every single school day while studying for high school in the IB. And I'm gonna say that again because I never pulled a single all-nighter while studying for the IB. Number two is meditation. I do this typically 10 minutes in the morning back in high school. Right now I do it right before I go to bed. Next is workout. I work out an hour and a half in the afternoon. This was extremely important to have energy and clarity while doing work. Four is to study on the bus. Most people waste their time on the bus. I use that as effectively as I possibly could because frankly, I was spending an hour and a half on the bus every single day. Number five is to work in focused 45 minute chunks. So every single time I sat down to do work, I'd put the timer for 45, maybe 50 minutes, somewhere around there. And I'd sit down without interruption, without music, without anything, with big headphones blocking out the noise and just 
sat down and focused. The next is to place your phone out of reach, out of sight while working. Even just right now, I have no idea where my phone is. And you can find the rest of the habits by putting in this Easter egg code in the description link down below. You don't want to miss this one out. And then of course, the most important habit that helped me the most in getting the 45 in the IB diploma is this one right here. And it's that I spent 30 minutes, only 30 minutes reviewing past papers, content I covered in the past, twice on the weekends. And then I spent an additional 30 minutes pre-studying future units and topics. I cannot tell you how much time this one habit has saved me. And it's in many ways the foundation to the success of 45. Because in doing so, you essentially put everything that you've learned into your long-term memory. And when the exams come up, you don't need to cram for every single day, 24 seven nonstop, because you already know the concepts. And again, just like I said before, the IB is a marathon. It is not a sprint. So you need to treat it as a marathon. I mean, you need to treat it as if you're going to be doing it for a long time because you are. Therefore, if you're going to doing it for a long time, you need to take the habits that allows you to keep the information in your brain for a prolonged period of time. I'm telling you, this habit will save you so much effort, so much pain, and it's going to give you a lot of time to really just do whatever you want. Now, I just want you to copy these habits. Don't come up with something new. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Okay, just do what I did, which worked. And coincidentally, you're going to get very similar results if you do it effectively. There's only one skill that you can develop that will have the biggest impact on your life. In many ways, it's a meta skill. And that's the ability to add good habits and remove bad habits. This is why Elon Musk has a billion dollar empire, because he has the habits that have turned him into the type of person who is able to create a billion dollar empire. Do that and your life will change. You'll be able to achieve any goal you want simply by becoming the type of person who achieves the goal. However, when I was working on my IAs, there was still one thing that was holding me back and preventing me from truly making it to the next level. This is the last secret you need to know to understand how my grades went from mediocre to excellent. Ignore this and the dream of a 45 in the IB will never happen. Every single day you wake up, you get up, you get changed, you go to school, and then you look at something. There is something in your life that you look at almost every single day. And this one thing is subconsciously preventing you from achieving your IB goals. It's not your phone. Instead, it's your timetable. Even if you don't realize it, a school timetable teaches you that all tasks are equal. You have equal amount of time for HL math than you do with HL physics, than you do with HL chemistry, and you have equal amount of time for SL English than you do with SL economics or whatever other courses you're taking. This teaches you that essentially all tasks are equal. Were you listening? Because that's the biggest lie we're taught in school. It's that all tasks are equal. We are taught that all classes equally contribute to your success. And then when you work hard, you proportionally get results. Here's an uncomfortable truth. You need to understand that all tasks are not made equal. Not all distractions are made equal. Not all study recovery is made equal. In other words, you need to understand the importance of priorities. You need to understand that there are certain tasks that give you disproportionately more return on investment on your input compared to other tasks. While it is scores of the IB give the same proportion of the final 45, meaning an SL English 7 is the same as an HL Math 7, you need to understand that some courses take longer to study for or require more mental brain power. In that regard, those two courses are not the same and they should not be treated as the same. Thus, you need to allocate your energy towards the tasks that you know will give you the largest results. You need to find what these tasks are for you and then spend all your time doing them. You'll start to realize that you can spend so much little time studying, but achieve so much more results just by outlining which tasks will give you the largest return on investment, whether that be in an exam or on an IA or on a homework. More information on the seeker can be found in this Easter egg right here, where I give a bunch of graph and a bunch of information on how you can make your study time potentially 6.5 million percent more value. I found that doing past study paper when you already studied the concept is the most effective way to study. In essence, it's the SS rank of studying. In other words, spending one hour working on past papers is equivalent to spending five hours just reading a textbook. I'm telling you, it is that valuable. And notice here that it's the same time, meaning if I spend one hour studying, it's the same as one hour textbook reading. However, that one hour studying gave me significantly more results. So it's not necessarily how much time you spend, but it's what you put into that time that makes the biggest difference. You need to find what type of studying leads to the most value to you. 
for me, it's past paper and research tends to back this up. And I've realized this after getting pathetic scores on my math and English exams. What's interesting is that when I made that switch, my grades immediately jumped up. I use the IB documents. And what's great about the IB documents is that it separated each IB unit into its separate section full of IB questions. So let's say you have a test on chemistry unit five. You can go to that part of the question bank and only do questions regarding to unit five. And what's most important about this is that you don't only learn the concept, but you also learn the type of questions that the IB can ask. And this is another very big mistake that most students make. They study with the wrong questions, which is a low value task. And now, if that wasn't enough, here's something else that most people won't tell you. When it comes to priorities, you need to always vet yourself in doing level seven work at all times, right? What do I mean by this? Let me give you an example pertaining to business. Let's say you're an entrepreneur and your goal is to make $1 million a year. Let's say you work 2000 hours. It's so your salary is going to be $500 an hour. In order for you to reach that goal, you need to make sure that every single hour you are outputting $500 worth of value. And every time you are not outputting $500 of value, you are losing money. Now we can relate this back to the IB where every single time you sit down to do work, you need to make sure you are outputting level seven quality of work. Similar to how the entrepreneur needs to output $500 in quality of work, you need to be outputting level seven quality of work. This means number one, you're working productively and in a state of focused flow every single time. This includes sleep and having energy. And number two, you're going through all the course content at the most efficient speed. For example, when I was studying for math HL, I would shoot through as many questions as humanly possible as fast as possible. This is a skill you will need to master and it's the ability to do as many questions as possible. Otherwise, you won't be able to possibly make it through all six subjects while studying in the final exam. And then number three is that you're obviously accurately testing your skills by taking practice papers in an exam like environment and you're achieving a level seven on those exams. Only then can you confidently know producing level seven quality work. Keep doing this and you will achieve your results. From the start, your destination was never some number. It was never about some score because a number just has no inherent value. Okay, it's the value that we assign to it as a community, which is oftentimes why I chuckle when I see numbers like these that can evoke such an emotional reaction. It was never about just getting a 45 number. It was always about getting that feeling of academic freedom, knowing that you can get the grade you want and then go into whichever university you want and carve out whichever career path you want to do in the future. That's true academic freedom. And that's why you're doing this. And when you have that 45 and you have the list of extracurriculars, the world really opens up to you. Myself, I use the 45 to get into my dream university of the Wharton and UPenn m and program, which is a dual degree between the engineering and the Wharton school, roughly with an acceptance rate of 1% and only 50 people get in every year. So I know exactly how it feels exactly how it feels to be in a position of feeling completely lost, completely discouraged, completely betting against the fact of whether or not I get a 45, to then reaching that point of academic freedom. And I'm telling you, achieving a goal that you thought was impossible or that other people say is impossible, it's one of the best feelings you'll ever experience. And there you have it, people. This is the first video I've posted with regards to productivity since 2020. So it's been, it's been two years now since I posted. And before that, I used to make tons of productivity videos in 2018 and it's, it's good to be back. I really enjoy doing this. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please subscribe down below and check out the other resources that I have on the website at grizzlyelite.com. You'll find a lot there. It's really crazy to know that I was able to reach this 45 goal because there was a period, especially at the beginning of grade 11, where I just did not think it was possible. I remember looking at that prediction of fives and sixes. And by the way, this exam is statistically accurate. So it's extraordinarily accurate and just statistically predicting based on your performance to other students. And the majority of my friends that I know ended up getting exactly what was predicted. So when I saw that, it really, really discouraged me. And by taking those actions and applying everything that I talked about in this video, it's definitely possible. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. If you didn't, let me know down below. I'd love to help love to be of service. And with that being said, let's get it. Stay productive. We'll talk soon.